Good morning. Welcome to the Cathedral of St. Mary. Please stand as we begin our celebration. Sing to Jesus is the same. 
In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. Peace be with you. My brothers and sisters, welcome to our celebration here this morning on this beautiful day, this joyful occasion for our diocese. I want to welcome each one of you, our four ordinandi, their families, all our priests, deacons, seminarians, and their friends who have come to celebrate with us and to pray with us this morning on this joyful occasion. So now, my brothers and sisters, let us acknowledge our sins and prepare ourselves to celebrate the sacred mysteries. I confess to Almighty God and to you, my brothers and sisters, that I have greatly sinned in my thoughts and in my words, in what I have done and in what I have failed to do, through my fault, through my fault, through my most grievous fault. Therefore, I ask Blessed Mary, ever virgin, all the angels and saints, and you, my brothers and sisters, to pray for me to the Lord our God. May Almighty God have mercy on us, forgive us our sins, and bring us to everlasting life. Let us pray. 
O God, who have taught the ministers of your church to seek not to be served, but to serve their brothers and sisters, grant, we pray, that these your servants, whom you graciously choose today for the office of deacon, may be effective in action, gentle in ministry, and constant in prayer. Through our Lord Jesus Christ, your Son, who lives and reigns with you in the unity of the Holy Spirit, God forever and ever. A reading from the Acts of the Apostles. Then the angel of the Lord spoke to Philip, get up and head south on the road that goes down from Jerusalem to Gaza, the desert route. So he got up and set out. Now there was an Ethiopian eunuch, a court official of the Candace, that is the queen of the Ethiopians in charge of her entire treasury, who had come to Jerusalem to worship and was returning home. Seated in his chariot, he was reading the prophet Isaiah. The spirit said to Philip, go and join up with that chariot. Philip ran up and heard him reading Isaiah the prophet and said, do you understand what you are reading? He replied, how can I, unless someone instructs me? So he invited Philip to get in and sit with him. This was the scripture passage he was reading. Like a sheep, he was led to the slaughter. And as a lamb before its shearer is silent, so he opened not his mouth. In his humiliation, justice was denied him. Who will tell of his posterity? For his life is taken from the earth. Then the eunuch said to Philip in reply, I beg you, about whom is the prophet saying this? About himself or about someone else? Then Philip opened his mouth, and beginning with this scripture passage, he proclaimed Jesus to him. As they traveled along the road, they came to some water, and the eunuch said, Look, there is water. What is to prevent my being baptized? Then he ordered the chariot to stop, and Philip and the eunuch both went down into the water, and he baptized him. When they came out of the water, the spirit of the Lord snatched Philip away, and the eunuch saw him no more, but continued on his way rejoicing. Philip came to Azotus and went about proclaiming the good news to all the towns until he reached Caesarea. The word of the Lord. Thanks be to God.
A reading from the second letter of St. Paul to the Corinthians. Brothers and sisters, since we have this ministry through the mercy shown us, we are not discouraged. Rather, we have renounced shameful, hidden things, not acting deceitfully or falsifying the word of God, but by the open declaration of the truth we commend ourselves to everyone's conscience in the sight of God. For we do not preach ourselves, but Jesus Christ as Lord, and ourselves as your slaves for the sake of Jesus. For God who said, let light shine out of darkness, has shown in our hearts to bring to light the knowledge of the glory of God on the face of Jesus Christ. But we hold this treasure in earthen vessels that the surpassing power may be of God and not from us. The word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. Hallelujah, hallelujah. 
am with you always until the end of the world. Alleluia, alleluia, alleluia. The Lord be with you. And with your spirit. A reading from the Holy Gospel according to Luke. Glory to you, O Lord. Jesus said to his disciples, gird your loins and light your lamps and be like servants who await their master's return from a wedding, ready to open immediately when he comes and knocks. Blessed are those servants whom the master finds vigilant on his arrival. Amen, I say to you, he will gird himself, have them recline at table and proceed to wait on them. And should he come in the second or third watch and find them prepared in this way, blessed are those servants. Be sure of this. If the master of the house had known the hour when the thief was coming, he would not have let his house be broken into. You also must be prepared for an hour you do not expect the Son of Man will come. Then Peter said, Lord, is this parable meant for us or for everyone? And the Lord replied, who then is the faithful and prudent steward whom the master will put in charge of his servants to distribute the food allowance at the proper time? Blessed is that servant whom his master on arrival finds doing so. Truly, I say to you, he will put the servant in charge of all his property. The Gospel of the Lord. Praise Praise to you, Lord Jesus Christ. Let those to be ordained deacons come forward. Matthew Francis Laird. William James O'Donnell III. Gregory Kyle Quinneville. Laurent Michael Vallier.
Most Reverend Father, Holy Mother Church asks you to ordain these men, our brothers, to the responsibility of the diaconate. Do you know them to be worthy? After inquiry among the Christian people and upon the recommendation of those responsible, I testify that they have been found worthy. Rely on the help of the Lord God and our Savior Jesus Christ. We choose these, our brothers, for the order of the diaconate. Thanks be to God. God. I think we all have to recognize and show how truly joyful we are here today. Not only because we have in a diaconate of nation, but because we have in four being ordained deacons. But not only because we have four being ordained deacons, but we have four good men being ordained deacon. And that has to be a source of great joy. I hope it is for each of you as it is for me. So today, yes, we rejoice, my dear brothers, in welcoming you into the order of deacons. And we celebrate with you, with your families, with our brother deacons and priests here today and seminarians. How wonderful it is that we are celebrating your diaconate ordination on the eve of the Feast of Pentecost. As the Holy Spirit was given to the apostles so they could go into the whole world and preach the gospel. Today, the Holy Spirit is given to you in the sacrament of ordination so that you too may be empowered to share the good news of Christ to your brothers and sisters. As the apostles were selected, chosen, gifted, and empowered for the mission, you also have been selected, chosen, and have been given your yes. So we want to Thank you for having accepted the Lord's call to become servants of the gospel. It is the Lord who called you, who chose you, and selected you for this ministry. Your generous response will bring joy to you and many fruits to the mission of the church here in the Diocese of Fall River. Your generous response will bring joy to you and to all those you serve. We heard in the first reading today that Philip opened his mouth and proclaimed Jesus to the Ethiopian eunuch and went about proclaiming good news to all the towns until he reached Caesarea. Today, as you receive this gift of ordination and the gift of the Spirit with the laying on of hands, you are given the gift of the mission to proclaim Christ to the world. Your yes that you have already given and that you 
publicly given here today by the ordination is not to honor and privilege, but to serve the Lord, to serve the church and all his people. You have been called, you have said yes, and now you are being appointed to go and serve. This service should never be seen as a burden, but there, rather as a joy to be able to be at the service of the Lord. As we read in Psalm 100, serve the Lord with gladness, come before him with joyful song. In the Acts of the Apostles, we hear that the word of the Lord continued to spread and the number of the disciples in Jerusalem increased greatly. How wonderful it would be if we can say the same thing about the Diocese of Fall River, that the word of God continued to spread and the number of the disciples increased greatly here in our own diocese. But you, it will depend on each of us. In all that you do, make disciples for Jesus. That's at the core of your mission. Work for your and their sanctification. This gift that you are receiving here today is given to you, but not for your self-aggrandizement. It is given to you to be used for the good of God's people. You know that among your duties as deacons is to minister, to be minister of the word. You are called to help the bishop and the priests in the ministry of the word. In this ministry, you always show to be servant of the gospel. You are not only to be hearers of the gospel, but its ministers. Your first duty is to be at the service of the gospel. One of the beautiful and the same time challenging parts of the rite of ordination is when you are handed the book of the gospel and holding it together with the bishop who says to you, believe what you read, teach what you believe, and practice what you teach. As St. Paul reminds us, we do not preach ourselves but Jesus Christ as Lord and ourselves as slaves for the sake of Jesus. It is important to keep in mind that salvation does not come from us, but salvation comes from our God who is seated on the throne and from the Lamb. Blessing and glory wisdom and thanksgiving, honor and power, and might be to our God forever and ever. Again, St. Paul reminds us that Christ died for all of us so that those who live might no longer live for themselves, but for him who for their sake died and was raised. So whoever is in Christ is a new creation. The old things have passed away. Behold, new things have come. We all know that it is not easy to live no longer for ourselves and to live it for him and for others. But that is what you are called to do with your yes and with the gift of ordination. Therefore, you are to, cl to cling to Christ with an undivided heart. As deacon, you are to go about your duties in such a way that you will be recognized 
as disciple of him who came not to be served, but to serve. So don't be afraid to be yourself. Don't be afraid to be human. Don't be afraid to be vulnerable. Don't be afraid to be imperfect because we hold this treasure in earthen vessels, as we heard today, that the surpassing power may be of God and not from us. So don't be afraid to recognize your need for God, for other people's help, for faith and prayer. Stay humble and you will find out that people will love you, respect you, and appreciate you far more than if you present yourself as better than others, as above others, as someone who knows better than others. The gift of sacred order is given to you, but not for you alone. It is entrusted to you to be at the service of others so that you can use the grace of the sacrament to bring others to the Lord. As Jesus made clear to his disciples, anyone among you who wishes to be first must be the servant of all. Whoever wishes to be great among you must be your servant. Whoever wishes to be first must be your slave. As the Son of Man did not come to be served, but to serve and to give his life as ransom for many. So serve the people in love and joy as you would the Lord. Follow the example of the Lord in love, prayer, service, and charity. May there abound in you every gospel virtue. Therefore, you need to be unfeigned in love. Have concern for the sick and the poor. Carry an unassuming authority. Have the purity of innocence and always observe spiritual discipline. As deacons, you will serve Jesus Christ who was known among his disciples as one who served others. One of the questions asked of you during the rite of ordination, which I hope you're gonna say I do, is do you resolve to conform your life always to the example of Christ, whose body and blood you are minister at the altar, and you will say, I do. Publicly and clearly, conform your life to that of Christ. So my dear brothers, firmly rooted and grounded in faith, you are to show yourselves chaste and beyond reproach before God and God's people, as is proper for the ministers of Christ and as stewards of God's mysteries. Never allow yourselves to be turned away from the hope offered by the gospel. Now you are not only hearers, but ministers of that gospel holding the mystery of faith with a clear conscience, expressed by your actions, the word of God which your lips proclaim, so that the Christian people, brought to life by the Spirit, may be a pure offering acceptable to God. Then, on the last day, 
When you go out to meet the Lord, you will be able to hear him say, Well done, good and faithful servant. Enter the joy of the Lord. My dear sons, before you enter the order of the diaconate, you must declare before the people your intention to undertake this office. Do you resolve to consecrate for the church's ministry by the laying on of my hands and the gift of the Holy Spirit? I do. Do you resolve to discharge the office of deacon with humble charity in order to assist the priestly order and to benefit the Christian people? I do. do you resolve to hold fast to the mystery of faith with clear conscience as the apostle urges and to proclaim the faith in word and deed according to the gospel and the church's tradition? I do. Do you resolve to embrace the celibate state and keep forever this commitment as a sign of your dedication to Christ the Lord for the sake of the kingdom of God in the service of God's people? I do. Do you resolve to maintain and keep the spirit of prayer that is proper to your way of life and in keeping with this spirit and what is required of you to celebrate faithfully the liturgy of the hours with and for the people of God and indeed for the whole world? I do. Do you resolve to conform your way of life always to the example of Christ, of whose body and blood you are ministers at the altar? I do, I do with the help of God. Do you promise respect and obedience to me and my successors? I do. May God, who has begun his work, the good work in you, bring it to fulfillment. Do you promise respect and obedience to me and my successors? I do. May God, who has begun the good work in you, bring it to fulfillment. Do you promise respect and obedience to me and my successors? I do. May God, who has begun the good work in you, bring it to fulfillment. Do you promise respect and obedience to me and my successors? I do. May God, who has begun the good work in you, bring it to fulfillment. Brothers and sisters, 
Let us pray that God, the all-powerful Father, will mercifully pour out the grace of his blessing on these his servants, whom in his kindness he raises to the sacred order of the diaconate. Lord, have mercy. Lord, have mercy. Christ, have mercy. Christ, have mercy. Lord, have mercy. Lord, have mercy. Holy Mary, Mother of God, pray for us. Saint Michael, pray for us. The angels of God, pray for us. Saint John the Baptist, pray for us. Saint Joseph, pray for us. Saint Peter and Saint Paul, pray for us. Saint Andrew, pray for us. Saint John, pray for us. Saint Mary Magdalene, pray for us. Saint Stephen, pray for us. Saint Ignatius of Antioch, pray for us. Saint Lawrence, pray for us. Saint Perpetua and Saint Felicity, pray for us. Saint Agnes, pray for us. Saint Gregory, pray for us. Saint Augustine, pray for us. Saint Athanasius, pray for us. Saint Basil, pray for us. Saint Martin, pray for us. Saint Benedict, pray for us. Saint Francis and Saint Dominic, pray for us. Saint Francis Xavier, pray for us. Saint John Vianney, pray for us. Saint Catherine of Siena, pray for us. Saint Teresa of Jesus, pray for us. All holy men and women, saints of God, Pray for us. Lord, be merciful. Lord, deliver us, we pray. pray. From all evil. Lord, deliver us, we pray. From ever, every sin. Lord, deliver us, we pray. From everlasting death. Lord, deliver us, we pray. By your incarnation. Lord, deliver us, we pray. By your death and resurrection. Lord, deliver us, we pray. By the outpouring of the Holy Spirit. Lord, deliver us, we pray. Be merciful to our sinners. Lord, we ask to hear our prayer. Jesus, Son of the living God, Lord, we ask you hear our prayer. Christ, hear us. Christ, hear us. Christ, graciously hear us. 
Lord God, mercifully hear our prayers and graciously accompany with your help what we undertake by virtue of our office. Sanctify by your blessing these men we present, for in our judgment we believe them to be worthy to exercise sacred ministries through Christ our Lord. Draw near, we pray, almighty God, giver of every grace, who apportioned every order and assigned every office, who remain unchanged but make all things new. In your eternal providence, you make provision for every age, as you order all creation through him who is your word, your power and your wisdom, Jesus Christ, your Son, our Lord. You grant that the Church, his body, adorned with manifold heavenly graces, drawn together in the diversity of its members, and united by a wondrous bond brought by the Holy Spirit, should grow and spread forth to build up the temple and as once you chosen the sons of Levi to minister in the former tabernacle, so now you establish three ranks of ministers in their sacred offices to serve in your name. And so in the first days of your church, through the inspiration of the Holy Spirit, your sons apostles appointed seven men of good repute to assist them in the daily ministries, that they might devote themselves more fully to prayer and the preaching of the word. By prayer and the laying on of hands, <clears throat> they entrusted to those chosen men the ministry of serving at table. We beseech you, Lord, look with favor on these servants of yours, who will minister at your holy altar and whom we now humbly dedicate to the office of deacon. Send forth upon them, O Lord, we pray, the Holy Spirit, that they may be strengthened by the gift of your sevenfold grace for the faithful carrying out of the work of the ministry. 
May there abound in them every gospel virtue, unfeigned love, concern for the sick and poor, unassuming authority, the purity of innocence, and the observance of spiritual discipline. May your commandments shine forth in their conduct so that by the example of their way of life, they may inspire the imitation of your holy people in offering the witness of a clear conscience. May they remain strong and steadfast in Christ, so that by imitating on earth your Son, who came not to be served but to serve, they may be found worthy to reign in heaven with him, who lives and reigns with you in the unity of the Holy Spirit, God forever and ever. Receive the gospel of Christ, whose herald you have become. Believe what you read, teach what you believe, and practice what you teach. Receive the gospel of Christ, whose herald you have become. Believe what you read, teach what you believe, and practice what you teach. Receive the gospel of Christ, whose herald you have become. Believe what you read, teach what you believe, and practice what you teach. Receive the gospel of Christ, whose herald you have become. Believe what you read, teach what you believe, and practice what you teach.
Pray, my brothers and sisters, that my sacrifice and yours may be acceptable to God, the Almighty Father. Holy Father, whose Son chose to wash the disciples' feet, and so set us an example, accept, we pray, the oblations of our service, and grant that offering ourselves as a spiritual sacrifice, we may be filled with the spirit of humility and zeal through Christ our Lord. The Lord be with you. And with your spirit. Lift up your hearts. Lift up to the Lord. Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. It is, right it is truly right and just, our duty and our salvation, always and everywhere to give you thanks, Lord, Holy Father, Might and Eternal God. For by the anointing of the Holy Spirit, you made your only begotten Son, High Priest of the New and Eternal Covenant, and by your wondrous design, we're pleased to decree that many ministries be exercised in the church. For Christ not only adorns with royal priesthood the people he has made his own, but with a brother's kindness, he also chooses men to become sharers in his sacred ministry through the laying on of hands. He chooses them to lead your holy people in charity, to nourish them with the word and strengthen them with the sacraments as they give up their lives for you and for the salvation of their brothers and sisters. They strive to be conformed to the image of Christ himself and offer you a constant witness of faith and love. And so, Lord, with all the angels and saints, we too give you thanks as in exaltation we acclaim. You are indeed holy, O Lord, and all you have created rightly gives you praise. For through your Son, our Lord Jesus Christ, by the power and working of the Holy Spirit, you give life to all things and make them holy, and you never cease to gather a people to yourself, so that from the rising of the sun to its setting, a pure sacrifice may be offered to your name. Therefore, O Lord, we humbly implore you, by, this, by the same Spirit, graciously make holy these gifts we have brought to you for consecration, that they may become the body and the blood of your Son, our Lord Jesus Christ, at whose command we celebrate these mysteries. For on the night he was betrayed, he himself took bread, and giving you thanks, he said the blessing, broke the bread, and gave it to his disciples, saying, Take this, all of you, and eat of it, for this is my body, which will be given up for you.
In a similar way, when supper was ended, he took the chalice and giving you thanks, he said the blessing and gave the chalice to his disciples saying, take this all of you and drink from it. For this is the chalice of my blood, the blood of the new and eternal covenant, which will be poured out for you and for many for the forgiveness of sins. Do this in memory of me. The mystery of faith. We proclaim your death, O Lord, and profess your resurrection until you come again. Therefore, O Lord, as we celebrate the memorial of the saving passion of your Son, his wondrous resurrection and ascension into heaven, and as we look forward to his second coming, we offer you in thanksgiving this holy and living sacrifice. Look, we pray, upon the oblation of your church, and recognizing the sacrificial victim by whose death you will to reconcile us to yourself, grant that we who are nourished by this body and blood of your Son and filled with the Holy Spirit may become one body, one spirit in Christ. May he make of us an eternal offering to you, so that we may obtain an inheritance with your elect, especially with the most blessed Virgin Mary, Mother of God, with blessed Joseph, her spouse, with your blessed apostles and glorious martyrs, and with all the saints on whose constant intercession in your presence we rely for unfailing help. May this sacrifice of our reconciliation, we pray, O Lord, advance the peace and salvation of all the world. Be pleased to confirm in faith and charity your pilgrim church on earth with your servant Francis, our Pope, and Edgar, our Bishop, with the order of bishops, these your servants who have been ordained today as ministers for the church, all the clergy, and the entire people you have gained for your own. Listen graciously to the prayers of this family whom you have summoned before you. In your compassion, O merciful Father, gather to yourself all your children scattered throughout the world. To our departed brothers and sisters and to all who are pleasing to you at their passing from this life, give kind admittance to your kingdom. There we hope to enjoy forever the fullness of your glory through Christ our Lord, through whom you bestow on the earth all that is good. Through him and with him and in him, O God, Almighty Father, in the unity of the Holy Spirit, O glory and honor is yours forever and ever. At the Savior's command, and formed by divine teaching, we dare to say, Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us, and lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. Deliver us, Lord, we pray, from every evil. Graciously grant peace in our days, that by the help of your mercy, 
we may be always free from sin and safe from all distress as we await the blessed hope and the coming of our Savior, Jesus Christ. Lord Jesus Christ, who said to your apostles, Peace I leave you, my peace I give you. Look not on our sins, but on the faith of your church, and graciously grant to her peace and unity in accordance with your will, who live and reign forever and ever. My brothers and sisters, may the peace of the Lord be with you always. I invite you now to take a moment of silence and turn to a Jesus present here in the Eucharist and ask him for the gift of peace. Behold the Lamb of God. Behold him who takes away the sins of the world. Blessed are those called to the supper of the Lamb. Lord, I am not worthy that you should enter under my roof, but only say the word and my soul shall be healed. Fighting. The 
body of Christ. Nets for fishing. Body of Christ. Amen. My daily labor. Body of Christ. Body of Christ. Kindly smiling. My name you were saying. The body of Christ. All I treasured. Body of Christ. I have left on the sand there. Close to you. I will find other sea.
Let us pray. Grant, O Lord, to your servants, whom you have replenished with heavenly food and drink, that for the sake of your glory and the salvation of believers, they may be found faithful as ministers of the gospel, of the sacraments, and of charity, through Christ our Lord. Amen. Well, we made it, right? <laughs> so, uh, my dear deacons, Matt, Bill, Greg, Larry, what a joy it has been, as I said. What a blessing for our diocese to have you for ordained. As I said, it's been 20 years since we had four nations, and I think that shows that our God is blessing us. God is working with us. God has never abandoned us, and he will never do so. And the, in the midst of these times, of so many confusion, so many uh, challenges faced by the world, we have four young men saying yes to the Lord. It really is a blessing. I want to thank really each one of you for having said yes. And I want to thank your families who have supported you, who have nurtured your faith, who have cared for you, and thank you, all oh, parents, for giving your sons as a gift to the church. God will reward you with so many blessings, and you ought to be very happy and proud and rejoicing today, as we all are. So I want to, to thank the, all the priests who have joined us today for this celebration, all the deacons, the seminarians, and all our wonderful music ministers here today. Thank you so much. And to you, my four sons. <laughs> Congratulations. God bless you. <laughs> the Lord be with you. Bow down for the blessing. May God, who has called you to the service of others, in his church, give you great zeal for all, especially the afflicted and the poor. Amen. May he who has entrusted you with preaching the gospel of Christ help you as you live according to his word to be its sincere and fervent witnesses. May he who has appointed you stewards of his mysteries make you imitators of Christ and ministers of unity and peace in the world. Amen. And may the blessing of Almighty God, the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit come down upon all of you and remain with you forever. Go forth, the Mass is ended. Thanks, Thanks be to God. God.
Lucas. Lucas. 